Uh, hi everyone and welcome back to this series of electrical B7 power system engineering BAO exam question and this is a transformer question and this is one of the regular questions I noticed in uh, after the uh, COVID era so that question has three parts we'll go through each one so the first one here is about a single phase transformer, trying to do some analysis on that transformer. And then they are referring to the pair unit here. So we'll, we'll cover that. Then something about three phase transformer, connections, ratio, and so on and so forth. And finally, what does the do dot notation mean when we have the winding in the transform? So let's start with the first part. So in the first part here, you are given R1, R2, X1, X2, RC, and XM, and everything is referred to the high voltage side, which is in this case, this is the high voltage side, it's the primary side. So you are given all the values in the refer to the primary. The first part says, what is the secondary leakage reactance? The secondary leakage reactance is this one. 70 ohm referred to the to the high voltage side but now it's asked to find it in pair unit so x in pair unit is equal to x in ohm divided by x base the base value so the pair unit you divide the ohm value by the base now the base x base or z base is equal to the voltage square divided by S. Voltage base value and S base value. Now the base value for the transformer here is basically your rating of the transformer. Okay. Now the S base is 50. It's very, very uh, clear here. The question is, what is the V base I have to use? The 7200 or the 345? volt now since these values are referred to the primary or the high voltage side then my v base here will be the high voltage side of the transformer square divided by fifty thousand and this will give me one thousand zero three six point eight ohm and from this your x per unit is equal to the x in ohms which is basically the 70 divided by 1036.8 and this will give me 0 0.0675 and the unit here is bare unit it's not in ohm any anymore then in the second part it said find the approximate no load current when we say the approximate means that we need to use the approximate model and the approximate model is simply this. So we add both the reactance and the resistance together and we'll put them in one side. So here, this is basically your R1 plus R2, this, which is equal to 25 ohm. And this is X1 plus X2 with J145. Uh, this, your... Um, uh, magnetization branch which is j 20.5 kilo ohm and this is 50 kilo ohm now in this approximate model this is your a v2 where a is the ratio so this is equal to 7200 volt and this is your i2 over over a now in part b it says that the no load current what does it mean the no load current? It means that the load is open circuit and this is equal to zero. So I want to find this current that goes here. So the voltage drop here is equal to zero. So the voltage at the primary, V primary, is actually also 7200. Okay. And this current it will be your I that uh, real and I imaginary. So your no load current is equal to IR plus IM. Now, what is IR? Ohm's law is the voltage that you have, which is 7,200 angle of zero divided by the 50K. 
50,000 plus the other current, the magnetization current, the same voltage because these two are in parallel, divided by J 20 point between 0.5 times 10 to the power 3, of course. Okay, so that is the no load current. If you do that, you will find the current is basically equal to 0.38 angle of minus 67.69. So that is your total no load, uh, no load current. Okay, so this is in basically amp, and usually it is very small com compared to the to the full load uh, current. Then it says here, find part C, find the approximate cover loss. What is cover loss? It's the loss in the 25 ohm. So I need to find I2 over A, which is basically your S, which is 50 times 10 to power 3, divided by AV2, which is the 7,200. And this will give my current equal to 6.944 amp. From this, P cover loss is equal to I2 over A squared times R, which is basically equal to 6.944 squared times R, which is the 25. And this will give me a total loss in the cover, in the winding, 1,000 to 0 0.5. What? 1,205 watt. Then, here it says, find the, also we need to find the approximate unity uh, at, uh, at the unity power factor. What is the full load efficiency? What is the efficiency of basically my motor? So let me just, please, uh, let me insert a page here. Let me insert a page. Okay, so let me uh, have this here. Okay, so let me just remove everything here. Okay. And let me start. Okay, so it says here, find the approximate or at the approximate unity power factor, what is the full load efficiency? Now, what is efficiency is equal to P out over P N. Okay, or P out divided by P out plus summation of losses. We have two losses. We have the cover loss and the core loss. We already know the cover loss. So the losses is basically B cover and P core. So we already know this. I need to find the P core and we need to find P out. What is P out? Is equal to S out times the power factor. Now the power factor here says it's basically at unity power factor, so it's equal to one. So this is 50 kilowatt. Okay, now let me remind you of the model that you we will be using here. Okay, so this is your AV2, this is your I2 over A, this is the 25 ohm and the J145. Uh, this is basically uh, your 50 kilo and J20.5 kilo. Now to be able to find the losses here, I need to find VP. And your VB, just KVL, equal to the AV2, which is the 7,200 7, angle of zero, plus the current, the current that we calculate here in this step, which is the 6.944, 6.944, for, because it's unity power factor, the angle is zero, the same angle of the voltage, they are basically in phase, because there is no phase shift, times the 25 plus J, 145 and this will give you a VB equal to 7442 angle of 7.78. So that is the voltage here at the primary side. And from this, you can find the P core is equal to the V primary square divided by RC or the 7442 square divided by the 50 kilo 
and this will give me 1,107.7 Watt. So from this, your efficiency is 50 times 10 to the power 3 divided by 50 times 10 to the power 3 plus the P core, which is 1,107.7 plus the P in the winding, 1, 2, 0, 5. And this will give me 95.6%. Now in part E, the approximate primary voltage when delivering a rated unit power factor load at the second day, which is basically at the same condition at D, which we already fa found it here. That is your, your voltage. So that is the first part of the question. Let's see the second part in that question. Now assume that this single phase transformer has been connected as a Y delta, draw the wiring diagram showing how the transformers are connected, including the three phase input and the three phase output. So basically here we will have three transformers. One, this is the second transformer, and this is the third transformer. So how to connect them as Y and delta? The primary is Y, so basically here, this is the phase A, the B, and the C. And then this is the common neutral. So all of this will be a common point, and that is your neutral. So we have four wire system. That is how you connect the wire. How to connect the delta? You connect the end of the one winding by the starting of the other winding. The end by the starting. The end by the starting and then we will have one this is phase a phase b and phase c so that is how you do the wiring diagram for the transformer what is the power rating very straightforward we have a three transformer each one is 50 kva so the s or the p so s of the three phase is equal to three times S of the single phase, which is equal to 150 kVA. What is the effective turns ratio of the transformer? So the turns ratio of the transformer is basically the line to line voltages, okay? So basically it's the voltage line of the primary divided the voltage line of the secondary. Now, this is a Y connection, okay? So the the single phase voltage and the line voltages are related by root 3. So it's root 3 times 7200 divided by, this is a delta. So the phase voltage and the line voltage are exactly the same. So basically this is, uh, stays the same, 3000, uh, so, sorry, 345. And the ratio will be 36.15. So the ratio in the three phase transformer between the line to line voltages of the primary and the secondary. Finally, what does the dot notation mean when we're referring to the winding of the transformer? The dot notation, which is basically when you have a transformer like this, we use a dot maybe here, maybe there, one, one in the primary and one in the secondary. So what does this mean? The dot notation has an impact on the sign of the voltage ratio and the current ratio as we will see. So here, for the voltage ratio, when, or if V1 and V2, V1 is the primary voltage, V2 is the secondary voltage, both the positive side or the negative side are at the dot, then use a positive ratio. What does this mean? This is the V1 and V2, the positive is at the dot side, or the negative for both of them as the dot side, then the ratio will be positive. If they are not at the same, meaning that here the dot as the positive in the primary and the dot at the negative on the secondary or vice versa, then the ratio will be, will be negative. So this is for the voltage ratio. For the current ratio, if both currents enter the, the dot or both current leaves the dot, then the current ratio will be negative. If one is entering and the other is leaving, then the current ratio will be, will be positive.
okay so that is a comprehensive question about a uh, transformer that covers uh, almost everything that you need to know about about transformers